If that made you jump or you feel like you're constantly in fight or flight every single night, your mind can't stop staring wide awake at the ceiling like you've taken a double espresso just to wake up the next morning feeling exhausted and not be able to string together a sentence until you've had your morning coffee, then bad news, your nervous system could be dysregulated. You need real answers because you're not broken. Our biological software was not designed for this modern world of constant stimulation. But the good news is our software has a hidden free upgrade that most of us never tap into. You can slow your pulse, calm your gut issues, and get to sleep quicker without quitting coffee, deleting TikTok, or going away on a silent retreat. Stick with me because over the next few minutes, we'll tap into your body's natural reset buttons, how it all works, and why all of this is so bloody important if you're a woman and you did not realize the effect your menstrual cycle was having on your nervous system. If you are new here, then my name is Faye. I'm a doctor working in London and on this channel, I try and bring you science-based solutions to the most common problems that I have faced in my life and I'm guessing you are facing in yours. So if that sounds like something you would be interested in, then make sure to hit the subscribe button just down there. A quick pit stop before we are pressing all the shiny reset buttons because we need to meet your nervous system. And I promise I'm not gonna give you a science lesson, but this is the information you need if you're going to try and unpack all the information that is thrown at you about your nervous system on social media. When nerves help us move our arms and our legs and choose to take action, there is a whole set of nerves that work automatically without us having to tell them to do anything. These nerves make up the autonomous nervous system that controls your heartbeat, your breathing, digestion, and so much more. And the autonomic nervous system has two pedals, the sympathetic pedal and the parasympathetic pedal. Now I'm gonna need you to stay with me and imagine that you're in a car. The sympathetic pedal is like the accelerator. This is your fight or flight. Your heart racing, your palms going sweaty, your eyes getting wide. You're trying to get away as fast as you can. And the parasympathetic pedal is the brake. This is resting and digesting, cool, calm, collected, together. Thousands of years ago, the function of the sympathetic pedal was to get us away from predators as quickly as possible. But now in a digital world where every notification on our phone can set our sympathetic accelerator off, our bodies have become overstimulated and constantly in this state of fight or flight. What's really important when it comes to nervous system regulation is our ability to respond to things that are actually stressful and need a quick response, and then be able to relax so that our body has time to restore itself. And a measurement that is used in science to assess how well we are switching between the accelerator and the brake is heart rate variability. If you have an Apple Watch or a Whoop or an Aura Ring, you can check your heart rate variability right now for free. And essentially it's the difference between how fast and how slow your heart beats. If there is more difference, you have a higher heart rate variability, which means that you have a more adaptable nervous system. Like having smooth gear changes when you're trying to drive up a hill rather than stall in the car. Whereas a low heart rate variability is associated with a nervous system that doesn't cope as well. But Faye, that is a measurement of my heart. What on earth does that have to do with my nervous system? How our body and mind respond to stress go hand in hand. And studies have linked lower heart rate variability to many different mental health conditions. Hormones are also key when it comes to our nervous system. So I need to introduce you to the HPA group chat. Hormones are the body's internal messaging system and the HPA axis is a three-way group chat between your hypothalamus, your pituitary and your adrenal glands. When something feels scary, like receiving a message from your long lost ex that you didn't wanna hear from or a deadline or having to speak up, in work. The hypothalamus releases corticotrophin releasing hormone, CRH, triggering the pituitary to release adrenocorticotrophin hormone, ACTH, which tells the adrenal glands to release a hormone I'm sure you're familiar with, cortisol. Cortisol is known as the stress hormone, but Cortisol is not the villain. It is the coffee to your cells and in a regular rhythm, it starts to rise at 3 a.m., peaking at about 7 to 8 a.m. and then steadily decreasing throughout the day so that you are nice and sleepy and relaxed for bedtime, ideally. 
pull an all-nighter or you chase three lattes with doom scrolling, the daily cortisol curve gets confused. This week, I asked on my Instagram broadcast channel if you knew how the menstrual cycle affected cortisol. And later on in the video, I will explain. But if you're not on the broadcast channel, that is basically where I go to for all my video ideas and to speak to you directly. So I will leave the link in the description box or just go on my Instagram, Dr. Faye Bay, and it's right at the top. So if cortisol is not the villain, then when does it become an issue and why has it got such a bad reputation? I want you to see cortisol like a fire alarm. When the fire alarm is working well, it will detect smoke, making sure that you get out the house safely. But if the fire alarm is broken and will not stop going off, not only will that drain your energy considerably, but you won't be able to detect when there actually is a fire. Cortisol becomes an issue when you are putting yourself under so much stress that the levels never come down. The fire alarm will not shut up. A 2025 study looking at brain MRIs and cortisol from hair samples found that people with chronically high cortisol levels showed measurable shrinkage in an area of the brain called the hippocampus. So to regulate your nervous system, you need to sort out your autonomic nervous system, your heart rate variability and your HPA group chat. And if you stick with me, I will tell you exactly how. But first, I wanted to share a really unexpected trick that I found for staying calm even when I'm online. Getting work done used to feel like a constant battle. I'd sit down, open my laptop, and the next thing I knew, I was doom scrolling or online shopping. One tab turns into 10, and suddenly an hour of my life has disappeared. Sound familiar? Most of my days are spent glued to my screen, so staying motivated and focused is tricky. That was until I started using Opera Air a mindful browser. The first thing that I noticed is its design. It is calm, clean, with no clutter screaming for my attention. Just a simple light space that actually helps me settle into work. And every time I open it, a little quote pops up, like a little nudge from the universe. The other day, mine said, focus on progress, not perfection. And wow, I really needed that reminder. The best part when it comes to calming your nervous system is Opera Air's built-in mindfulness tools. When my brain starts running in circles or the tabs start multiplying, I switch on soundscapes. There are over 20 options from chill lo-fi beats to soothing nature sounds. It's like my personal soundtrack for focus or calm depending on what mood I'm in. And if you're anything like me and you consistently forget to take breaks, get up, have some food, some fresh air or some water, then you absolutely need Opera Air's body battery. It gently reminds me to take a pause. I take a moment, a few deep breaths, a quick neck stretch. And just like that, my nervous system feels more calm and regulated and I'm ready to keep going. For me, Opera Air isn't even just a browser anymore, it's an anchor, helping me stay focused, take care of myself, and make screen time feel so much more balanced. The best part, it is completely free to try. If you want to try it, then click the link in my description. Thank you so much to Opera Air for sponsoring this video. Now you and I both know that we are not the same person every single day of the month, and neither is your nervous system. If you've ever noticed that the week before your period, every single tiny annoyance can feel so much harder, like someone has cranked up the dial on your life to hard mode. This is not just the hormones associated with your menstrual cycle, it's also your nervous system. So a quick recap about your menstrual cycle. Your follicular phase is often when your mood is a bit more up, estrogen is on the rise and it is after your period. Once an egg is released, estrogen begins to decline. This is known as your luteal phase and often this is when you do not feel your best. So where does your nervous system fit in to all of this? A 2025 review of 20 studies found that the luteal phase increases the activation of the sympathetic nervous system, so the accelerator on your car. Heart rate climbs higher and stays higher when a stressor hits. And a 2024 study found that heart rate variability dropped in the luteal phase as well. Remember your gearbox stalling. Not long ago, there was a situation in work where I felt like a male colleague was undermining me. And don't get me wrong, I've dealt with that many times, but this time was so different. I felt so overstimulated. I felt really 
trapped in this situation. I just wanted to run away and not talk to them. And when I tried to explain where I was coming from, I literally felt my voice break in. And I was so confused why it was having a much bigger effect on me than it should have done. And then I went home from work and I beat myself up about it. And then I took a look at my Natural Cycles app and not too long afterwards, I was due on my period. And suddenly it all made sense. There is a plot twist though when it comes to cortisol because cortisol actually tends to sit lower in your luteal phase, which may be why you feel sluggish and less energized. I've tracked my period for the last three years on natural cycles and this is exactly why I think it is so important. Not necessarily because we can change our hormones or how you react to things, but you can give yourself grace and understand your body better. Now, out of all the TikTok trends on how to reset your nervous system, there is one method that has stood the test of time. It has been around for thousands of years. It is the ultimate way to reset your nervous system backed by science. And if you do not do this properly, your heart rate increases, you have lower heart rate variability, and there is a huge increase in the sympathetic nervous system activation. So accelerator all the way down. That my friends is sleep. Now to come back to the car analogy, even though I don't really know that much about cars, I do not think you can fuel a car up whilst it is being driven. I may be incorrect, but I've never seen it happening. So that's how I want you to view sleep when it comes to resetting your nervous system. But the issue is when our nervous system dysregulates, then it impacts how easy it is for us to get to sleep and how well we sleep, which dysregulates our nervous system more and the vicious cycle continues. But my tips and tricks don't all relate to sleep and I will be getting to them very shortly. But first, we need to talk about the engine of our car, our gut. If you've ever had butterflies in your stomach right before a presentation, then you already know the impact that our nervous system has on our gut. But did you know it works both ways? An unhappy gut can equal an unhappy nervous system. And the main way the gut and our brain communicate is via the vagus nerve, which is part of our parasympathetic nervous system, AKA that calming, cooling break. Why is this especially important if you are a woman? As a woman, you are twice as likely to have irritable bowel syndrome, otherwise known as IBS, and involves symptoms like unpredictable bowel habits and tummy pain. And a possible cause for this could be dysregulation of your nervous system. A 2020 systemic review looking at 154 studies concluded that those with IBS have a reduced heart rate variability in comparison to individuals without IBS. So yes, being an anxious girly is not just in your head, it absolutely is in your body and it's affecting your health. I have a full video on how you can improve your gut health that I will link just here and in the description box for you to watch after this video because we have finally made it to my daily nervous system reset blueprint. Easy habits you can integrate into your life right now to reset your nervous system and keep it regulated for the rest of your life. First thing in the morning, I need you to open your curtains and if you're a work from home girly and don't need to rush out the door for your daily commute, even better if you go for a walk and get all the natural light that you possibly can. Morning light is key for our circadian rhythm, which is what helps us get to sleep at night because when our circadian rhythm is in beat, we get to sleep easier and we sleep better. In winter, I also use a light from Luby that is 10,000 lux to try and replicate morning sunlight. And I just put it on at my desk whilst I'm doing my work to get that hit. Next is dipping your face in cold water and holding your breath for about 15 seconds because the combination of holding your breath and cooling your face initiates this dive response in our body that lowers our heart rate. Please only do this if you are able to hold your breath for 15 seconds underwater and you don't have any heart or lung conditions, but a cold blast of water at the end of your shower can also activate the vagus nerve, which is part of the breaks in your nervous system. Then you're gonna walk yourself to your kitchen and make a breakfast for your gut. So prebiotics like fruit, veg, whole grains are key for your gut health. And recently my favorite quick 
breakfast before work has been Greek yogurt, chia seeds, and some frozen berries. Easy to prep the night before, a good source of protein and fiber, and perfect for your gut. Then, whilst I'm on my commute and I'm extremely overstimulated by the London underground, I will put on a headspace for five minutes. Instead of scrolling, which just seems to make my fight or flight worse, I hit the brakes, I take a moment, I focus on my breath, and my nervous system immediately feels more regulated. When I do not do this, I notice such a difference because I walk into work flustered and struggling to focus rather than cool, calm and collected and ready for the day. If in work there's a situation that is particularly stressful, which does happen a lot when people are very unwell, after the situation has been handled, I will take myself somewhere private and I will do this stretch to activate my vagus nerve, which is part of the brakes system. Basically hijack my body into calming down because I'm fully aware that there are certain situations where you can't deep breathe your way into feeling calm. So you just put your head to the side. Again, please only do this if you can and you don't have any neck pain or neck issues, but put your ear to your shoulder and then don't turn your head and look at to the ceiling and just hold that for a couple of seconds. Another technique you can do if maybe you've got a presentation, you've got to give and you notice you're getting more and more anxious. You're just going to put a hand on your chest, a hand on your stomach and you can do this while sitting at your desk and take a deep breath in through your nose. You want to feel the hand on your tummy push out while the hand on your chest stays where it is. I can't really do this because my bodysuit is so tight. <laughs> this is known as diaphragmatic breathing. The reason it activates your sympathetic nervous system is because the vagus nerve is attached to your diaphragm. And then when you've pushed your tummy out to a point where it feels comfortable, you're then gonna exhale through your lips, keeping them like Jennifer Coolidge, pursed and just do that for as long as it feels nice. Then when I get home, I make sure that I am not doing any work two hours before my bedtime because work is stressful and it's going to be activating our accelerator when we want to be winding down our body, gradually hitting the brakes. I also will make sure I have a do not disturb on before bedtime because notifications can also hit the accelerator on our nervous system, leaving us wired and making it harder for us to get to sleep. One to two hours before bed, I will also take some magnesium because plenty of studies have evidenced its positive impact on our sleep and our ability to relax. But there are also some studies suggesting it could lower our cortisol. And finally, I am begging you begging you, stop charging your phone by your bed. It should not be the first thing that you reach for when you wake up, and it absolutely should be nowhere within reach when you are going to bed. Realistically, our phones and the digital world are the main culprit when it comes to nervous system dysregulation in the majority of people. If you don't have boundaries with your phone, you will never have a regulated nervous system. Let me know which one of the tricks was your favorite and which one you are going to try in the comment section. But if there's one main message I want you to take away from this video, it's how all of this has evidenced that rest really is one of the most productive things that you can do. Now you know how to regulate your nervous system, but maybe you want to know all about how to fix your gut health by watching this video here, or maybe you want to watch this video just below that has been recommended just for you specifically based on what you're interested in. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week and I will see you in the next video. Mwah!